Hello and welcome to Git and GitHub for Poets. This is a tutorial series that I am beginning today and the whole point of this tutorial series is to explain what is Git, what is GitHub, how do you use them, and let me say something really important from the outright. You don't need to know anything about programming or code whatsoever to follow this tutorial. Git and GitHub are tools generally used by software developers, creative coders, and eventually, as I get through more and more and more and more videos about Git and GitHub, we'll start getting and looking at code repositories. But right now, it doesn't matter. What I want to do is put a poem on GitHub, and I want to see what happens when you take a poem on GitHub, and why is that powerful, and why would that be something exciting to learn about, and I hope that people People will watch this who want to use Git and GitHub for creative ways that might not even necessarily, for collaboration and creativity that might not necessarily have anything to do with programming. So we're going to start from total scratch. So first of all, why do these things exist? So I'm going to come over here to my computer screen and I've been working very hard on a poem about rainbows. It's a terrible poem. I don't know if I can show you. It's, uh, I don't even want to show it to you, but has this ever happened to you? <laughs> Did you write a poem and then you made some revisions and saved another file, underscore one, and then you saved another file, underscore two, and then you called it final, but then you wanted to revise it again, so you called final revise, but then it was like really the final. You see the point. Often what happens is you're working on something, a piece of, a, a, a poem, an essay, an image, a design, a piece of code, and you have versions of those over time, and you want to save a previous one. The history of what you're making is important. This is primarily the first thing about what Git is, that is why Git exists, for something called version control. So rather than you, the creator, having to keep track of separate files and a history yourself manually, Git is a piece of software that does that for you. It keeps track of the entire history of things that you're working on on the computer. But it's not just for you. So this is very powerful on its own, but there's something more to what Git has and a lot of features that Git has. And what I would say the other thing that's really key here, I don't know why I'm putting quotes here, but collaboration. You know, to be, to be honest, you can do a lot of what we're talking about with things like Dropbox or Google Docs or all sorts of other tools that allow you to keep track of the history of a file or even have multiple people work on the same file. But Git is a particularly special tool which has a lot of advanced and sophisticated features for collaboration. In particular, it doesn't have a problem with two people working on the same document at the same time, and there's lots of ways of managing that, which I'll get into as I get further and further along. But this is what I want you to think about. This is a system that you can use to keep track of the history of a project, as well as allow many people to collaborate on the project together. Okay. So that's the first point I want to make, which hopefully is good. <laughs> now let's move on here for a second, and I need to make a really important distinction. What is Git and what is GitHub? Okay, let's write Git over here, <laughs> and let's write GitHub over here. This tutorial is going to live somewhere in the middle. Eventually, I'm going to kind of start with just only showing you GitHub, and eventually later, I'm going to only show you how to do stuff only with Git. But right now, I want to live in this strange place that's in the center. Why? Git is the actual version control software. This is the actual application. It was invented by, you know, that guy who invented Linux. His name and a link to it will be somewhere in the description. It has another story about why it has a name. You can look that up on why it's called Git. You can look that up on Wikipedia. But Git is just version control software. There are countless examples historically of other version control software. This is a, a very particularly popular one. You can run this on your laptop. You can run this on anywhere you want. GitHub, I'll say, I'm going to call it a website or a web service. GitHub is a web service where you can sign up and have an account and do stuff, do Git things on a server, on a website. So you can, GitHub kind of runs the Git software behind the scenes. And some people call it like social coding. In a way, it's like a social network for projects that are managed through Git. So what I want to do is show you how to use, the reason why we're living in the middle here is I want to show you how to use GitHub to do all the things that Git does. 
But it should, be, it should be really important to realize that these are two completely different things. Git itself is the application. You, don't, you, could, you, could, be, you could spend your life being a Git person and never ever go to the GitHub website. Interestingly, you can also spend all of your time on the GitHub website and never actually run Git anywhere else. But I want to live here in the middle. I want you to start by using Git and learning the Git concepts through the GitHub interface and later see how those concepts translate locally to your own computer. I said that way too many times, but I'm trying to set the stage for myself. You can skip ahead to future videos if you've been rambling too much. Okay, so let's now actually go and get started. So here we are. We are writing a poem about rainbows and we this has become a disaster. So we're going to go over to the GitHub website. Now, the one thing that I've done that I'm not doing in this video tutorial is I already signed up for a GitHub account, a brand new GitHub account. My username is Rainbow Coder. You just need a username and an email. You can upload an image, that sort of thing. So pause this video now and go sign up for an account or just keep watching, whatever you want to do. If you haven't done that, you want to try to do this along. Now, the first thing that I want to do, and I'm going to keep track of kind of a list of terms over here. The first term that's important, this is a different pen, let's try using it, is a repository, uh, affectionately by me, or also known as a repo. So a GitHub repository, um, a GitHub repository um, is a, what, another word for like a project. It can have multiple files associated with it. It's, uh, it's it's a repository of files. So I want to make, the first thing I want to do is just make a new repository for my poem. New repository. And I'm going to call it um, Rainbow uh, Poem. So I'm calling it Rainbow Poem. And this is, and notice by the way, it's going to name it for me automatically with a dash because Git, Git, Git repositories can't have spaces in their names. And this is a repo for my poem. And I want this to be public. And I also want to check this box right now, initialize this repository with a readme. A readme is a special kind of file that goes in your repository that says, this repository is a repository for poems about rainbows. <laughs> so I'm just going to check that because it's going to make it a little bit easier for me to work with it. And then I'm going to hit this green button over here to create that repository. And now you can see, look at this. I have my GitHub repository. This you can see is the readme file. It made one by default right over here. So this is it. I've now made a repository, a place where we can have files. Now, what kind of file do I want to work with? I'm a writer. I'm a poet, a really terrible one, not actually. But um, so I'm going to, what I want to do is create a new file. So I want to put a new file in my repository. This is the file that I'm going to work on. I can have many files, but I'm going to start with just one. So I'm going to create new file, and I'm going to name my file a poem.txt. There are lots of different file formats that GitHub and Git and GitHub can keep track of for you, anything, but I'm going to work with just a plain raw text file. So um, I'm going to uh, scroll down, and now look at this. So this is where I name the file. Oh, I'm going to write my poem. Um, the, oops, I'm going to write my poem down here, the rainbow, purple, pink, orange, blue, red. These are the, the colors of the rainbow. <laughs> That's the end of my poem. So I wrote my poem, and now I'm going to scroll down, and you might think, now I'm going to hit save. But notice here, look at this, commit new file. So this is another key term in our list of terms. Repository is the repository of stuff. Commit is now, uh, is like, you can think of this as a save. So a commit is I'm going to change the file and make a commit. I'm committed to this. I'm very committed to making this tutorial. Now, there's all sorts of stuff about commit directly to the master branch or create a new branch. This is branching is going to be the topic of my next video, which is going to be exciting, I hope. But right now, all I want to do is press commit new file. And I press that, I'm going to zoom back out, and you can see now, here are the files in my repository, the readme file and the poem. And I'm going to click on poem, and we can see, there it is, there's my poem, here's the file. Now let's say I wanted to make a change to this file. I've decided that it's missing the color green. So um, I'm going to, 
I'm going to go over here to find the, oh, this little icon over here is the edit button. So I can use that button to edit this file. I'm going to click edit. And now I'm going to add, and you can't see, <laughs> I'm doing a terrible job of managing where the stuff is here. I'm going to add right now the line green. So I added this, I'm editing my poem. And then I'm going to scroll down and look at this now. Over here, under Commit Changes, this is the button. All I need to do is press that button and I've made a save. However, this is each commit, each save can have a note associated with it, which can sometimes be useful when you're collaborating or even to keep track of things yourself. So I'm going to say I am adding the color green. And then I'm going to just hit Commit again. And I'm also going to um, do this again really quickly. And I'm going to green, yeah, I'm going to add uh, yellow. And I'm going to say adding the color yellow. And I'm going to commit those changes. So I've made a bunch of commits. So we can now, here we can see the current version of my poem. And what, so, so what have we done so far? We've made a GitHub repository, we put a single file into it, and we made a few commits on that file. So why is Git and GitHub exciting and powerful? Because now I can actually go and view the history. So one thing I can do is I can click, um, I'm looking for somewhere in this, <laughs> in this interface where I see the button, the, 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 um, the word history. Oh, right here, I don't know why I couldn't see that. Over here, there's a button called History, and I'm going to click on that. And look at this. This is now my GitHub history. The first thing I did was create poem.txt. Then I added the color green, and then I added the color yellow. And any one of these that I click on, it can actually show me what was changed at that moment. So you can see the line that was changed is highlighted, plus meaning something was added, and the green color, uh, it's funny, it was green, it's also a green color showing you what was added. So I can also go back and look and see when I added the color yellow, this is what happened here. There's all sorts of ways. Now, something kind of goofy is over here. Look at this crazy number. So while this looks like the most nonsensical thing that you would ever want to look at and looks sort of terrifying, this strange, crazy st string of numbers and characters, this is the commit hash, meaning a unique identifier for this particular commit. Notice also up here in the browser's URL, rainbow dash poem slash commit slash that crazy number. So I, you don't ever have to memorize this, you don't ever have to write it down, but this is something that I want to point out to you because it's going to come up again and again. So I'm going to come over here and look at commit hash. This is a key concept. So let's review. Git is version control. GitHub is a website where you can do projects that have version control on them. You can make a repository where you add files to that repository. Then you can make changes to those files by making commits. And those commits allow you to browse a history. And each one of those commits has a unique identifier for it. So this really is the basic idea. And I, what I would say now is, Go and make your own GitHub repository, write a poem in it, uh, get it going, play around with the interface, see what happens, and in the next video, I'm going to show you, I'm going to talk to you about branches. Git branches, what is a branch, and why might you use them, and how do they work on GitHub?